An overview of our research and modeling work here at the Edward Zuckerberg Authority essentially involves two main fronts. Primarily, we focus on a couple of things. One, trying to understand the sustainability of the aquifer, not only now, but for future generations, but also to develop data and information that can be used to guide and inform uh, resource and policy decision-making uh, into the future. So from a sustainability standpoint, we wanna focus on two fronts. One, quantity of water, how effective the aquifer system might be in maintaining its quantity of, that's available for people to use. And then on the water quality front, how do we identify those areas that are most susceptible to contamination? And then we combine all that with a range of data collection activities that all feed into our modeling efforts to try to understand one, our conceptualization of the system, but also how we might represent the system for now and into the future. All that goes together to form the basis of our research program right now. Here at the Field Research Park, we're deploying a suite of methods to measure the various components of the water cycle and how water interacts with the rocks and uh, environment and ecosystem on the recharge zone of the Edwards Aquifer. One way we can do that is by understanding all the other components of the water budget. Recharge is particularly difficult to measure directly because it happens all over the landscape. What we do is we measure rainfall using weather stations throughout the site, measure evapotranspiration using a method called eddy covariance. We measure runoff using pressure transducers and weirs. We measure unsaturated zone storage and changes in that storage uh, using geophysical methods, including electrical resistivity tomography and borehole nuclear magnetic resonance, as well as a suite of uh, conventional soil moisture sensors. So the methods we're using to study land management encompass all components of the water budget. We're looking at starting from rainfall, the input, to all the outputs, evaporation, transpiration, runoff, infiltration. So we have a set of experimentation and data collection for each individual component of that budget. The collaboration of scientists, policymakers, and private citizens is critical in conservation. These problems related to uncertainty, related to climate change, growing population, urban sprawl, land development, are not just simple issues that one group can tackle. All these folks need to work together. Here in Texas, more than 95% of the land is privately owned. We need the help of private landowners and private citizens to extend conservation practices across the region, whether that be through conservation easements, through irrigation suspension strategies, through aquifer storage and recovery leasing, or through land management. We need all of these programs to work together to combat the uncertainty we may face in the future. The water quality program collects for major ions, including trace elements, stable and radiogenic isotopes, and a broad range of organic compounds as well. We're also looking at many new emerging contaminants, so we've added things like nutrients, PFAS, and microplastics to many of our sampling suites. All this geochemistry data that we collect it's hopefully going to allow us to identify areas in which the aquifer is vulnerable to contamination and help us to understand the intra-aquifer connections. So the Edwards Aquifer and adjacent aquifers provide water for over 2 million people in San Antonio and the surrounding areas. That water resource is used for a variety of applications across the region. So when development projects are proposed over the aquifer, people in the nearby communities start to raise concerns over how that development can affect the water quality in their wells. The data we collect helps us to assess the level of vulnerability in areas across the recharge zone. And this information, we can start to implement sustainable practices on easement properties, keep citizens informed, and our data helps to develop the policies that protect these environmentally sensitive areas. AI models provide the capabilities for projecting groundwater level, spring flow, and aquifer recharge under future climate conditions. These models are trained using historical hydroclimatic data to unveil complex hydroclimatic relationships between climatic variables and hydrological variables. The trained models are subsequently used with climate projections 
obtained from the global climate model to project their aquifer behavior under future climatic conditions. Such insights from AI-based predictions are very critical to evaluate the sustainability of the aquifer and effectiveness of our existing management and mitigation measures under future climate scenarios. Insights from AI-based predictions are critical for the sustainability analysis of the aquifer as well as to assess the effectiveness of drought mitigation measures aimed at protecting the aquifer and uh, habitats under future climate conditions. So we have comprehensive water quality monitoring program, water level monitoring program, a significant number of data streams that are handled within the organization. We try to make that publicly available with publicly accessible databases uh, to utilize and uh, collaborate with others. It's a total team effort at the Edwards Aquifer Authority and that's something that we're really proud of.